Welcome back to VA Creative and part 52 of the Ultima RS build. And on this episode, we install the Porsche Transaxle. Yes, welcome back to the Dean Den and another all day pass. And on today's episode, as I said in the intro, we're going to be fitting that Porsche Transaxle to that 6.2 litre V8. And it is amazing. And if you missed the last episode, episode 51, where I fitted the engine, please go and watch that also. I'll put a link in the description because it got the most view hours in the first 24 hours of me publicizing it. But anyway, I have one more piece of news before we start spannering, and that's about Rufus. Rufus feels a bit left out. So he has decided to make a small section in this video, later on, you can find it, where he shares with you some of his childhood memories as a puppy. Anyway, on that note, Let's just go over to the back of the RS and start installing that box of cocks. Right, spannering. Yes, we're almost ready to put the box of cogs in the RS chassis. But before we make this to that V8, what we need to do is assemble the clutch release mechanism. Now, Ultima provide this in a kit so you get everything and it's a very, very simple installation. So first of all, we have the clutch release fork, which you can see here, and the clutch release bearing is actually already mounted in the center of it. Also, what we have is the sleeve. This is what the clutch release bearing slides up and down on. And then finally, we have the pivot point and the clutch release fork is held on this with a small spring. So let's just get on and let's start spannering. Now, the thing I've done off camera is you slightly lubricate this clutch spline here, this is where the clutch sits and it moves up and down. Now, you don't want to put too much grease on this because what will happen is as this is spinning very quickly, it will spray out and go on to the clutch surface, which is not a good idea. So just a small amount of lubrication. Next goes on this little sleeve, which I'll pop on like that. And let me just get this bolt. Now the bolts do come with shake proof washers, but I like to put a, bit, a little bit of thread lock on them as well, just to be sure. Next, we have the pivot point here, which goes in on this threaded hole up here. And again, let's pop some thread lock on it. Super. Now, before we pop on the release fork, what we need to do is put some molly grease, not lots, just a small amount, on this little sort of concave area here. This is where the pivot point sits. And then also on this, this is where the clutch slave cylinder pushes. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, not a lot, just a tiny amount. Okay, so this release fork pushes over like that, and then you push, and there you go. It clips into place, and now we know that won't move. And this is the action here. So when the clutch is pushed, the clutch slave cylinder pushes this fork out. You can see there. This bearing here 
then pushes on the fingers of the pressure plate, which then takes the pressure off the clutch plate and basically um, it disengages. So what you'll do is you put the clutch in, change gear, take the foot off the clutch, and then the pressure plate will put pressure back on the clutch plate and you've got direct drive again. So that's done. So the next thing is, let's put this in the car. The Porsche transaxle is a pretty tight fit through the chassis members here. So what you need to do is protect the powder coating by using duct tape. And the factory say three layers of duct tape will protect it in case there's the odd bump or not. So what you can see behind me, I've got the gearbox suspended on a sling and the front of it, I've actually just got on my crawler, which is quite good actually. It makes it easy for me to move it around. So what we're gonna do is basically slot it through this hole, push it up, and what we need to do is line the splines up on the transaxle with the splines of the clutch. And to do this, what you can do is you can rotate the drive shaft outputs just to spin that output, just to line it up correctly. So what you'll see me doing is I'm pushing it in, you may see me moving them slightly, and then it will go home. So I think we're ready. Right. I'll put some background music on at the moment because I want to focus when I'm doing this and concentrate. Anyway, enjoy. <laughs> Come on, rookie, park that thing. Ten feet. Catch. That's it. Talk back is Barbara Paul. Go ahead and retract. Houston, we have a hard dog. Roger, I understand. Six and we keep on driving. We just do what we want to do. Hey, play songs on the video. Sing along to the words that we don't know how. Looking good. God, don't it look good. And me painting the transaxle the same colour as the block of the engine is really, really paying off now because everything matches. It's so cool. Now, what we've got to do next is get rid of this sling because this is supporting the rear of the engine. And what Ultima do is they provide a small cradle that sits back here and supports this. Now, the cradle is this here. So let's open this up, see what it looks like. And there it is. Powder coated, of course, to match the chassis and comes with all bolts. Now this, I guess, goes like that. Yeah.
Right, a mention to a fan out there, Brian from Chicago. Thank you, mate, sending me a whole box of beer. But I tell you what, this isn't normal stuff. I, I, this hasn't even got a percentage on it, but... Gosh, strong. Oh, that grow hairs on your chest. Anyway, Rufus also says thank you very much for his stacks. Next up we got to do is attach the selector mechanism on to the side of the Porsche gearbox. And what that consists of is two cables. You can see them just here. These obviously come from the gear stick in the car, in the cockpit. And these two shifters connect to this arm here, on the top there, on that ball joint. And then there's another little one down there that's just in shot, you can see that. Now there's a bracket, which um, Ultima provide, that bolts onto the gearbox, just like so. And then what we do is we connect those two cables through that bracket onto the selector arm. So let's just get to it. going to do here is just just take off the powder coating inside these holes okay blues on the bottom Next on the list of jobs as we work our way around the transaxle is fitting the clutch slave cylinder. As you can see here, it's a pretty compact component and it's held in by two bolts with washers and spring washers. The blind bolt is easy to put in, as you can see there, um, but the top bolt, you're a bit blind, so you've just got to feel your way to make sure it connects correctly. So there you go, you can see I'm pushing it in now. Now I get my ratchet and then just tighten these up so that slave cylinder is in place. Now the next part of the installation is to actually connect the hydraulic hose. And this comes from the clutch pedal. And what you can see here is I'm popping on a small extension supplied with the kit. And this has a right angle connector on the end, which allows it to be neatly connected 
to the slave cylinder and you're going to see me doing that now now that connector is tight yep i'm lining up now just being very careful starting it with my fingers so i don't cross thread that aluminium thread um, i'm just tying up now and then use that 15 mil spanner just to tighten that up i'll speed up a bit because i can only go about an eighth of a turn at a time so it takes a little while to get that in place now the only thing left to do on this job is to ensure that hydraulic hose is connected correctly and what I mean by that is that it is attached to the chassis so it won't move during use and what you can see here pop a little bit of tape on the chassis I'm drilled drilling a hole here 3.2 millimeters in diameter and then there's a little plastic p-clip there and if you can see it I'm just bringing it up now which I'm going to pop rivet in place with a small washer and a rivet. Here it goes. Oh, I love my pop riveter. I'm sure this is the best tool in the build so far. And there you go. It's those little touches that make the car reliable in the future. So next, speedo sensor. So the next ancillary to fit to the transaxle is the speedo sensor. So what we've got to do first is remove these two bolts. The reason we're removing those is Ultima provide a small bracket, which you're going to see now, which will hold eventually a small sensor that is triggered by a trigger wheel. Now that little bracket comes preformed. It's in raw aluminium, but I decided to paint it black to match all the other other ancillaries on the gearbox. I just can't help myself. So just nipping those two bolts up and what you can see just above it that is the drive shaft output. Now what I'm going to do is actually get the trigger wheel and just put it on that output just temporarily um, and the reason I'm doing that is so I can get that sensor within I don't know about a mil, half a mil of those teeth because what that's going to do is actually trigger this Hall effect sensor and send a pulse to the speedometer. Now, as you can see there, I'm using copper washers to space it perfectly uh, and then just tightening up that nut. It's quite a big nut that and getting the spanner in is a bit tricky. You'll see, I can only sort of just get it in at a slight angle to um, tighten it up. But there you go, I'm just making sure those washers are just crimped and then what I do is just check that distance and I put a little diagram in there for how the Hall effect sensor works.
Yes, another episode draws to a close and what an episode. I still pinch myself when I'm looking at that 6.2 litre V8 bolted to that six speed manual transaxle from Porsche settled in the pristine chassis of my RS. It is just a work of art. Moving forward, the other things I have to install before we do that first start, because it's not far off. We have to put on the drive shafts, the induction system, and also the exhaust system. Yep, I have to plumb in the rest of the cooling system, do a few loom connections, and then she'll be ready. So until next time, as always, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you've missed the last episode, part 51 of the engine install, there'll be a link coming up here and also on the description. So until next time, keep smiling and keep spannering. Whenever I'm with you, I am all right. There's something about the way you make me feel inside. I'm counting down the days till we fly away. Heading to the sun, only you and me are.